the idea many of us have where the plan of god is concerned is this we all know that jesus is the lamb of god so our imagination is that one day in heaven and, and the story i'm about to tell that many of us can identify with that one day in heaven god and his angels were sitting and having a nice time god was sitting all angels were together and as they were having a nice time one angel just stood up and said i want to overthrow god i will be like god i will take over government and he went on a campaign adventure okay and in that campaign he succeeded in winning votes from many angels and then after he has set up the conspiracy well okay he now engaged god in a fight and the fight was so fierce that he almost defeated god but somehow somehow god managed god managed to succeed and the moment god succeeded in stopping the coup god threw him down so as he fell down he destroyed the earth and in destroying the earth he made adam to sin okay are you here that's the way we think okay and the moment adam sinned he took over then god said ah what shall i do to contain this rebel then god said okay i know what i will do my son will die and overthrow him to recover power that's what all of us were told i was taught that both in sunday school in crk you know crk christian religious knowledge bk bible knowledge i did both crk and bk such a thing never happened that's the first thing such a thing never happened so the first thing i want you to do is wipe it up so we can establish what really happened all scripture is given by and is profitable for doctrine for teaching or explanation so let's get the scriptures to explain to us what actually happened now in genesis chapter 1 there was nothing before genesis 1 1 so there was no such thing as god was sitting down in heaven with angels and they misbehave no such thing ever happened there was nothing before genesis 1 1 because genesis 1 1 says in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth verse 2 says and the earth was toho boho that's a that's a hebrew word toho boho means the earth was nothing nothing toho nothing boho nothing so the earth there was nothing before genesis 1 it was toho boho nothing nothing so to say that there was there was a world before the world of adam is to question the the authority of scripture because scripture tells us which is the basis for our doctrine that nothing existed it was toho boho so that will mean that the first time earth was created was genesis 1 1 then that will also mean that god had been before genesis 1 1 that will also mean that there was no satan before genesis 1 1 that will also mean that there were no angels before genesis 1 1 that will also mean that there were no humans before genesis 1 1 and that will also mean that there were no dinosaurs before genesis 1 1 because genesis 1 1 god was creating then genesis 1 2 says the earth god created was toho boho nothing nothing so if nothing existed before genesis 1 it means only god was there so the first time god ventured into creation was genesis 1 are we in the house okay so in moses's vision the earth was without form void and darkness was upon the face of the deep was god showing moses the plan of salvation the first thing god showed to moses was the plan of salvation before anything was created because salvation is not an afterthought salvation is the plan of god 
that is the original intent that is the original plan of god for man that's why all scriptures are given by inspiration and they are profitable for all of that that that's why paul told timothy the scriptures are able to make thee wise unto what salvation through faith which is where in christ jesus so salvation was not an emergency fix for the fall of man salvation was the original intent salvation was the original plan of god for all of mankind now but please follow that means therefore that creation is a function of time nothing was done before time everything took place in time satan in time angels in time man in time all of the planets in time but god out of time and watch this god has always been out of time is still out of time and will continue to be out of time he never was in time no he only created time and everything that comes with time while he himself is independent of time are we here okay now since god created everything in time there was a guy called lucifer among the angels lucifer was an angel among the angels that were created by god in time and like we all know god created man before creating the angels and he created the angels to serve man all angels no angel was created to serve god all angels were created to serve man god does not need angelic help god is self-contained he is god all by himself before creating anything he has been not requiring anybody's assistance if he never required anybody's assistance he does not require anybody's assistance he will never require anybody's assistance because he is god all by himself and has never subjected himself to time he does not need help from anything that originates in time time cannot help timeless only timeless can help time are you following yes <laughs> honey that's why god humbling some of those prophets he said to them if i need a house i will not come to you if i need a house which house do you have if i'm hungry the food i eat you don't have it i won't come to, i'm god i'm not man i'm the self-existing one i'm the only one that nobody created nobody created and i'm the only one that nobody knows my day of birth if i was ever born nobody can trace my history i am the self-existing one i can tell where all of you came from and how all of you came out but none of you can tell how i came why i'm the self-existing one are we teaching here okay now follow carefully because we're going somewhere so this guy lucifer was an angel created among all the angelic beings and like we know the activity of angels according to the scriptures hebrews chapter 1 verse 7 and of the angels he said who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire he's talking about angels here verse 14 are they not all how many all. now this all does it include cherubims seraphims all angelic bodies how many of them what is the mission of all of them are they not all what ministering spirits what is their assignment sent forth to do what to minister for who for them who shall be heirs of salvation so all angels were created to serve man that will mean that lucifer was created to serve adam in eden 
he never was in heaven occupying a place of choir master never he never was a choir master we don't have that in the doctrine of scripture he was one of the angels that was assigned to do what to serve man is that clear okay now in the book of isaiah and ezekiel we have some insight into the operation of this light being called lucifer isaiah 14 ezekiel 28 he says how thou art falling down from heaven O lucifer when he was talking about falling down from heaven he wasn't talking about heaven he was not about he was talking about the atmosphere because angels flow in the atmosphere not in heaven in the atmosphere this atmospheric is called atmospheric heavens this atmosphere we see we call it heaven but this is not heaven paul said i was caught to the third heaven meaning that there are three heavens there is this atmospheric heaven there is the second heaven and there is the third heaven and these heavens are not like lined up where you travel from one to another how they operate you can't understand just leave it are we together here okay so this guy lucifer was in the atmosphere in the in the sky the atmospheric heavens and the bible says he fell down haven't you read where jesus said i beheld satan fall down like he is not lightning he fell down from heaven as like it was a figure what he was saying is just like lightning falls psh, satan fell suddenly from where from the atmosphere teaching good so when you hear people say demons are flying over their house is scriptural illiteracy satan does not operate in the air because you read the bible calls the devil the prince of the power of the air so some of you think satan is flying in the sky and anytime he stays over your house you feel heavy and in the course of flying every time he perches on your building malaria fever all kinds of attack satan is sitting over the roof so you have to open fire you have to open fire it's illiteracy and the devil knows you're ignorant because if you knew better you wouldn't think like that the word air there is the word pneuma pneuma means spirit the prince of the power of spirit the prince of the power of the pneuma the prince of the power of the spirit then he now tells you his location hey kabataka the prince of the power of the pneuma the spirit then he now tells you his location the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience so he doesn't fly in the sky he lives inside people who don't have christ meaning that he carries out his activity through human beings he's not patching on your roof he may be inside the person sleeping by your bed i don't know if i'm communicating at all okay the prince of the power of the air the pneuma the spirit and then he now explains to us his modus operandi he is the spirit of disobedience and his operational system is in the children the children of disobedience disobedience to what disobedience to the gospel so all those that disobey the gospel by not believing the gospel when a man does not believe the message he has disobeyed the gospel when he disobeys the gospel what does he become he becomes an operational center for satan are we here okay follow me this lucifer was a minister to adam he ministered to adam what was his job to what to do what to who to adam 
because all spirits are to minister to heirs of salvation now something happened between lucifer and adam god didn't create satan god created lucifer lucifer doesn't mean satan and satan doesn't mean lucifer whatever god created was perfect whatever god created was good whatever god created was correct so lucifer was correct lucifer was good because he was created by god but there was an assignment for which he was created to serve man adam was created by god as a figure of he that is to come adam was a figure of christ he was not christ but he was just a figure the job of adam was to have dominion over to be in charge while the job of lucifer was to run errands for adam hello now let me give a very physical illustration just to help your minds if you are supposed to be the director of this facility and you are giving some boys to help you run the facility and then your boys are supposed to go by your instructions and then all of a sudden the boy is given to you and attached to you to help you run the facility walks up to you and say excuse me sir take that chair so i say take that chair okay and then he takes the chair what has happened positions have changed okay the errand boy has become the boss and the boss uh, so from that moment if you're watching who is sir among the two the errand boy who is boy among the two the boss so from that day what will the boss be called boy and what will the errand boy be called boss Okay, there's a switch of roles and there's a change of name. S Lucifer was supposed to receive instructions like every other angel from Adam. But for the first time, Lucifer gave Adam instructions. Did God say you should not, according to Moses' vision, did God say you should not eat of this thing? And if didn't know what to answer him okay he said god is wise he knows that the day you eat of it you shall be like him but what was the instruction thou shall not eat of it so she took it in obedience to the instruction of lucifer she and adam ate there was a swap of roles satan automatically became the commander adam and eve became the ministers that swap of role turned lucifer to satan and it was at that swap of role that man died so two things have happened man has died lucifer has become satan all as a result of a transaction between man and lucifer are you in the house now watch this you know that god didn't create satan god didn't so the creation of satan was purely by an interaction between lucifer and man now watch that's why after jesus defeated the devil he still put the devil under man because that's where he should be so the bible now says what happened to adam was that adam transgressed adam was in the transgression what is transgression 
Adam did not heed to what was told him and because he didn't heed to what was told him he decided to act absolute authority outside of God's sovereignty it's like somebody says well I control my life I own my life I can do what I want to do with my life no you're making a mistake you can't do what you want to do with your life you don't control your life you only have that life to function that life within the will of God the moment you function out of the will of God you have committed sin sin is acting contrary to the plan of God sin is doing what you think to do what you feel like doing when you feel like doing it irrespective of what God has said the moment you do what you feel like doing irrespective of what God has said you have sinned and when you do that you are responsible for the action but you are not in charge of the outcome yeah, 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 yeah. oh yes Adam ate he died he was responsible for the action but he couldn't control the outcome because I'm sure when Adam saw that now he has been stripped he must have thought of how to get it back but he can't get it back he is only responsible for the action but he cannot control the outcome that's why the child that was told not to put the hand in the fire the parents said if you put your hand in the fire it will burn you the child did not listen the child went and put the hand in the fire the fire burnt the child the child cannot control the pain and cannot control the extent of the bone but the child can decide to put the finger but whatever comes out of that burn the child has no control over medical science will struggle to fix that finger back depending on the degree of the bone medical science may not even succeed in making that finger look like before there will be a dent there will be a scar there will be a malfunction or a design in that finger that makes everybody know that something is wrong with that finger and that child will have to live for life with that scar in that hand the child made a decision but could not control the outcome of that decision don't drink alcohol you say it's my body after all alcohol makes me tipsy it makes me tipsy then you start drinking you are drinking the alcohol you decided to drink it but what it does to your liver you have no control over don't commit fornication you say after all i'm saved by grace i will just commit fornication after all what is it the blood of jesus washes forever that is true but as you're committing fornication and hiv enters your body yes you control the fornication decision but you can't control the gonorrhea and the syphilis and the hiv that comes out of it so you decide but make sure your decision is in the will of god otherwise outside the will of god you're on your own i'm teaching good this morning any choice man makes outside of god's will is a sin so that broadens the definition for sin it broadens it because when we talk sin many of you what you think of is fornication adultery that's what's common stealing lying if you decide to live a quiet bomb to lagos outside the will of god all your life in lagos you are in sin because you're out of his will you're out of his plan you made a decision irrespective of the sovereignty of god just say well i just got a better job when i was in a quiet bomb my salary was two thousand this one is five thousand without seeking to know what the plan and the mind of god is concerning you you moved and on arrival your wife died your two children died you were sacked now what happened you made the decision but you cannot control the outcome So that's why again you must understand the plan of god and that's what we're going to stay on the whole of this week because when you understand the plan of god you will live in eden out of the plan of god is out of eden now don't don't get me wrong eden 
in metaphorical sense because it's actually not eden it's heaven you enjoy the heaven's life if you reject the gospel if you refuse the gospel you have subscribed to death eternal separation from god which begins with his exhibits here on it are you blessed everywhere is quiet hallelujah we know that lucifer was created in eden the bible tells us that in isaiah you know he was created in eden from the day you know isaiah tells us ezekiel tells us um god made adam the god of this world but satan gave adam instructions adam complied that is what we call sin romans 6 16 put it up for me for clarity know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey his servants you are to whom you obey whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness when adam yielded himself to satan who was lucifer when he yielded himself a servant he became a servant of lucifer unto sin and out of sin came death if you yield yourself a servant of anything outside of god that thing becomes your master anything you yield to if you yield to anything that thing becomes your master if you yield to smoking it will become your master if you yield to cheating it will become your master and if you yield to god he becomes your master thank you lord adam was made the god of this world that's what god made him adam was made a sovereign only on the earth and he gave his sovereignty to satan adam took that control absolute dominion over the earth and handed over to satan in that exchange it was not only an exchange of roles there was also an exchange of position and an exchange of authority and an exchange of influence in that exchange he lost everything every that's why in the book of matthew look at it just for clarity in the book of matthew chapter number four verse eight and the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them now look at me for a minute everybody satan didn't walk to jesus physically that's not what happened satan didn't go and say jesus are you jesus follow me no that's not what happened so many of you that's what you think happened it was in jesus's mind satan spoke to his mind like he speaks to your mind he says are you sure you will live another one year look at the way things are happening you will soon die satan is talking the same way he spoke to jesus now when the bible says he took him up and showed him put up that scripture when he says he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them we shall soon understand what the kingdoms are i will explain and he said unto him all these things will i give thee if thou will fall down and worship me then said jesus unto him get thee hence satan for it is written thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shall thou serve then the devil liveth him and behold angels came and ministered unto him luke chapter 4 verse 6 and the devil said unto him all this power will i give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me question who delivered it to satan adam that dominion god gave adam in the transgression adam gave it to satan and from that day instead of adam being the god of this world satan became the god of this it's just as a swap of office that's why in first corinthians 4 4 he says in whom the god of this world who is the god of this world satan who was satan lucifer so in the plan of god what did god have in mind lucifer or satan lucifer lucifer is the plan of god satan is the plan of man 
so he became the god of this world now when he said he showed jesus the kingdoms of this world look up the kingdoms of this world he didn't show jesus 30 story building he didn't show jesus uh, the tallest building in dubai those are not the kingdoms of this world no those are not the kingdoms of this world the kingdoms of this world are the hearts of men he showed jesus people's hearts and said can't you see i live inside all of them i reside in their hearts i am the one in control of the human race can't you see i own humanity because adam handed over humanity to me then he said jesus if you kneel down now and worship me i will give you their hearts jesus said, look at you i know how to get it without kneeling down to worship you i will not do what my father has not allowed my father has not allowed me to kneel down and worship you to get the hearts of men my father has a better way of getting me to get the hearts of men what jesus was simply saying is to get the heart of men i am ready to die to pay the price to take man back i will not go through the shortcut i will go through the wrong route i don't know if i'm talking to somebody here so when jesus died that death paid the price for the heart of a man to be stripped of satan's authority i don't know if i'm talking to somebody that is why when the message of his death his burial his resurrection is preached a man's heart is delivered i don't know if i'm talking to somebody see the message of hellfire cannot deliver a man there is no power in the message of hell the message that carries power is the gospel what is the gospel the death the burial and the resurrection the moment a man hears that faith faith is injected into him and because faith has entered him even if he's an atheist he starts believing see the power to believe is not in a man the power to believe is in the message so until a man he has the message he is not saved even if he came out for altar call 30 times 